Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Recently, I received an email from someone who told me they downloaded the fully working free trial of On One Photo Raw 2021, and they were having a difficult time with it. They really didn't know where to start. I mean, because let's face it, there is a lot in this software. You could do a lot with it, and it can be difficult to know how to begin, and it can be difficult to develop a workflow that works for you. So they told me they mainly shoot landscape images. So I told them I'll do a video demonstrating my workflow. Uh, if you see my workflow in On One Photo Raw 2021 on a landscape image, maybe it will help you develop a workflow that works for you. Now we're going to work on this image. This is an unprocessed raw file. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to On One Software's website. As I mentioned, they have a fully working free trial. I also have a discount code that will save you some money if you decide to purchase it. I'll have all that listed in the description below. Now, when you bring images into On One Photo Raw 2021 and you decide which image you're going to work on, you'll be in the edit panel right here and you'll usually start out in the develop module. And the develop module is where you'll just do some basic processing to your image. Now, personally, I like to crop very early in my workflow. So if I were to crop, I would jump over here on the left hand side and click on the crop tool. And you can see then you have all different options here for cropping your image. And you could pull in from the handles to get a crop. You could go to the drop down and so on to get different ratios. Now, as far as this image is concerned, I like the way it was captured in camera. So I'm not going to do any cropping at all. So I'm going to click on view down here. And I'll just go right over to the top and I'm going to start out with the first tab, Tone and Color. And those of you that use Lightroom or something like that, you're probably familiar with the tone sliders, right? We have highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. It also has a mid-tone slider as well. Now to begin with, I'm going to go to the highlight slider and I'm going to rain in that sky a little bit. I want to try to see some detail in the brightest part of that sky. And I, really all the way down and I've still got some parts that are really, really bright. But we'll start right there. I'll open up the midtones a touch and we'll open up the shadows a little bit. Then I'll go to the whites and blacks. And the, what I want to do is get a white point first. And to do that, I'm going to hold in the J key, J as in Jack. Hold that in and then move the whites slider to the right. And when I do that, you'll start to see red appear on the brightest part of the image, in this case, the sky. That means I'm clipping the highlights. When you're clipping an area, that means that there's no detail there at all. Now, as far as the whites are concerned, when I'm clipping those brighter parts in that sky, if I were to print this, no ink would be put down at all in that area. So typically, most of us don't like to clip the highlights. So we'll back that off until all that red disappears. Now, I'm holding in the J key the entire time I'm doing this. So I'll just bring that until all that red is gone. And that is my white point. Now I'll do the same thing for blacks. I'll hold in the J key, click on the black slider and move it to the left. Now you'll see blue come in on the darker parts of the image. Again, that means now I'm clipping the shadows. If you're clipping shadows and you print it, you'll just get black ink, black ink put on that part of the paper. Now typically, personally, now this is just personally, I like to clip the shadows a little bit. I just believe it gives my image a little more tonal depth if I'm clipping the shadows a bit. So varies from image to image and I typically will only clip the shadows on a landscape image or some type of image like a landscape image, maybe a cityscape, maybe some travel images. Portraits, I usually don't like to clip blacks. It depends of course on the portrait, but I'll clip those a little bit. And that to me is a good white and black point. So I'm pretty much done with tone. Now we'll jump down here to these next two sliders, structure and haze. Structure just gives your image like some sharpness. And if you move it to the right, you'll see you'll start to get sharper and sharper until you start moving it way far to the right. And it gives it kind of like that HDR look. Now, on the other hand, if you want to give your image a softer, more ethereal look, you can move it to the left and you can see how it gives it a softer look. For this image, I don't think I want to adjust structure at all. So to reset any slider back to its default position, just double click right on the name of the slider, in this case, structure. So just put it right back in its default. Now haze, if you want to add haze to the image, move it to the right and you'll add haze. 
If you want to take some haze away, move it to the left. Now in this case, as I move it to the left, I could see that it's bringing out some more detail in that sky. And I really want that sky to have more detail in it. So I'll do that, move that to the left. So I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, Going down, we have the color section. Uh, we have temperature, tint, saturation, vibrance. Now, as far as the white balance, the color temperature, I think it's fine. I'm not going to adjust that at all, and I'm not going to adjust saturation or vibrance at all. I'm going to save that for an effect that I'll be using when I'm in the effects module, and you'll see that in a minute. Now, I'm pretty much done here. One thing I didn't mention at the very top, you'll see camera profiles. If you open up that drop down you'll see that there's a number of on one profiles and a number of camera specific profiles um, since I started processing this already and I forgot to mention this at the top I'll stay with the on one but if you wanted to see what the others look like you could just hover over them and you could see how um, they're changing the look the color and contrast of the image now I suggest you do this first right after you crop so crop the image then do this uh, because you can see how it's drastically changing uh, the white and black point, for example, which I already set. So do it first. I neglected and kind of forgot. But we'll leave it with on one standard because that's what I started to use. Now, we're done with the tone and color tab. Next is details tab. This is sharpening and noise reduction. This was uh, shot at a very, very low ISO. Uh, so there really is, I zoom in just clicking on it, you can see there's no noise at all. So I'm not even going to worry about noise reduction. I could come back and revisit this later. And as far as sharpening is concerned, there's really not an element in this image that I need to make super sharp. You know, it's not like um, a macro of an insect where I want all the tiny hairs on the insect's abdomen to be defined. So I really am not too concerned about sharpening either. I'll just like tweak that up a little bit just to say I did. All right, I'm done with that. Now below that is lens correction. Uh, you could see that it automatically found my lens. It was a 14 to 24 Nikkor lens, f2.8. So that looks good. It found the lens. I don't have to do anything there. Now as far as the transform controls, um, if you're doing real estate photography or maybe you have a cityscape and the buildings are tilted out, you know, outward or tilted back, or if you're doing real estate photography of inside of a building and the corners are kind of crooked, you could come in here and fix it with the transform tools. Here, this image doesn't need it at all, so I'm good to go. So I'm really done with the develop module, but before I jump over to the effects module, I wanna do something. See these branches up here in the top right and top left? I wanna get rid of those. To me, they're a bit of a distraction. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to the retouch tools right here. So you click on retouch, and you can see that there's uh, four different tools up here. The first tool is the healing brush, the next tool over is the perfect eraser. The next tool next to that is the retouch brush. And then next to that is the clone stamp tool. Now I'm going to start out, uh, I'm going to use the uh, retouch brush right here. And I'm going to maybe bring feathering up a little bit. Opacity at 100 is good. I could change the size of the brush uh, right here, as you could see with this drop down. Or if you hover over the names right here, you can see how your cursor turns into a double horizontal arrow that's called a scrubby slider if you click with the left mouse button you could change uh, the size by just dragging your mouse left or right while you're over the word size or change the feathering if you're over the word feathering but in this case here uh, you could use the bracket keys too. the right bracket key makes it larger left bracket key smaller I'm going to use this healing brush or this retouch brush I'm sorry and I'm going to then just paint over each of these individual branches that are sticking out over into the frame at the top. And you can see how it does a pretty good job and it works relatively quickly as well, which I like. So we'll come in here and get rid of these very quickly over here. See how it does, didn't like that. If, it, if you don't like, like that pattern it did, you could come in here and just kind of redo it. Go over it again. Go over there. Like that. All right, that looks pretty good. Got rid of that. Now we have these branches over on the far right. Now let's just, for fun, use a different tool so I could show you. Our clone stamp tool is another tool I most often use. Uh, feathering maybe kind of high, maybe 68. And with this, uh, we'll again use the right bracket key, make it a little bigger. 
And then what we're going to do, now this one paints the same way. You come in here and paint on the branch like this. Then what it does, it samples an area, and you could move this around, this sample area around, to try to get it to better match uh, the uh, what you're replacing. So there's that one. Now I didn't like, obviously, I don't like what it did, but we'll fix it. And we'll come in and do this one, like that. Then we'll go back over to the healing brush, and we'll come in here and we'll soften these edges a little bit, right? Like that. We'll try to soften those edges, but then you could come in and, you know, play like this. Just try to make it look a little better, a little more presentable. You could try one of the other brushes, like the Perfect Eraser, uh, see if that helps. Come like that. And this one, Perfect Eraser is a little bit slower because it analyzes the, uh, the scene a little more. Also here, this is a new tool. This is the new healing brush tool. And with this, um, you see it's showing the overlays. Uh, for the uh, clone stamp tool as well. But you could come in and you can see that helped. But I'm going to leave that as is. But you could see the idea. I probably should have just stayed with the uh, retouch brush on those. But I just wanted to show you another tool to see how it works. But I could come back in and fix those later. But for the sake of this demonstration, you see how these tools work. All right, once we're done with the tools, just come back over here on the left and click on the view tool right here at the very bottom. And now we'll go over to the effects module. It's right here. And here you could add a number of different effects uh, to your image. Now, most of us that use on one photo raw have our favorite effects. And probably my most favorite effect, and probably many people's favorite effect, is dynamic contrast. And you can see when you add it, it will automatically add some dynamic contrast to your image. There's before and there's after. Now, obviously, it ran, it added a little bit too much. Now you have some presets for each of these effects uh, going along the top. You can see there's natural, there's surreal, kind of that HDR look. There's soft, a soft look if you prefer that. Under this drop down we have another one, grunge contrast. There's the natural, we just did that, soft, surreal. There's another one, texture enhancer as well. So let's go back to natural and it's just a little bit too strong. So I'm going to not readjust any of the sliders that it adjusted, but I'll go up to the top where the opacity slider is. And right here, I'll just drop that down a little bit so that it doesn't have that quite HDR look. Uh, I just want to just bring it down a little bit like that. And that's kind of like a master volume control for that effect. So I like that. All right, now I had mentioned that uh, when I was in the develop module, I didn't do anything for color, meaning vibrance and saturation. I didn't adjust uh, those two sliders at all. That's why I, pre I prefer to use effects for that. So we're going to go to add filter, and then we're going to uh, go to color enhancer right here. And you can see that there's a lot you could do here. This has saturation and vibrance here. And there's also the drop downs at the top, or the presets, I'm sorry, at the top with a drop down included. So you could come in and do different types of color effects uh, for your image, like make it warmer, uh, make it look the desert look, whatever. I'm not going to use any of those, all right? What I am going to do is I'm going to go down here to color range, and you can see that we have individual color swatches. And typically, what I like to do is increase the saturation or decrease saturation if needed for individual colors and also increase or decrease the brightness of those colors. I often or I don't often change the hue of the color. I like to keep it somewhat natural in that regard. So what I'll do is I'll take red and I'll move saturation up and it's affecting just tiniest parts of the image there. All right so then we'll go over to the next uh, swatch over orange and I'll turn saturation up for orange. See if I make Make a little bit brighter as well. Then I'll go over to yellow and we'll bring saturation up on yellow. You can see it's definitely affecting this tree right here. And the grass a little bit. Make it a little brighter. Then we'll go to green and we'll increase saturation of green. And I'm going to make greens a little darker because it kind of contrasts with the yellow a little better. And then we're going to jump over to the uh, blue swatch, and I'm going to bring brightness down on blue to bring the sky. You can see it's making the blue sky a little darker. Maybe increase saturation a touch there. And that's pretty much it. So 
Uh, let's kind of see where we stand so far. So to get a before after, uh, the easiest way is with a keyboard shortcut. You could use the backslash key on your keyboard. There's both preview off, it says at the bottom. There's before, and then click it again, and there's after. Now I still think it looks probably a little bit too HDR-y. Uh, let's turn off dynamic contrast. And dynamic contrast isn't adding a much, so not too much there. Um, I could jump back over to the develop module and go to the details, or I'm sorry, the tone and color panel, and then go down to this hay slider. That's probably doing it a little bit and bring structure down a little bit. I think that helps. So don't be afraid to jumping back and readjusting something if you need to, but I think that looks a little bit better. It was looking a little bit too to me, to my eyes, a little bit too HDR-like, and I didn't really want that. So next we're gonna go to add a filter, and I'm going to go to a tone enhancer this time. And this is similar to that basic uh, tab we had in the develop module, but still the sky's a little bit too bright for me. So I'm gonna go to highlights here, and I'm gonna use that to bring those highlights down. So you can see I'll bring it way down. I think that looks a little more balanced. And that's all I'm gonna use that for, actually. And of course, I still have this as kind of ugly up here in the corner, but in real life, I would fix that. I just want to make that aware because I'm sure someone's going to comment that that looks horrible. And it does, I agree, but I'll get rid of that in real life. I wouldn't have used the clone stamp tool for that. And I think I'm actually pretty much done. Um, what I could do, another filter that I like, uh, but it, I don't use it on every image, is this sunshine filter. And it just adds kind of a kind of a just a nice kind of warm like tone overall to the image like there's the natural look they're strong there's kind of a glow a lot of people like to add like a glow to their images personally i don't i don't care for that so then you have some of those repeated here the glow the natural now here's a nice one radiance kind of like radiance they're strong again sun glow sunshine and warm highlights um, I kind of like radiance, I think. Let's see, before, after. A little bit too strong, so I'm going to bring the opacity down. Just want it a little bit. Like, there's before, and there's after, before, after. You can see it affected the, the uh, contrast a little bit in here. And I could come back in, of course, to the develop module. You notice I didn't move contrast at all, uh, so I could bring contrast down a little bit, or if I wanted a little more contrast. But I, you know what, I'm just going to leave it right where it was. I like that bit of contrast in there. I will jump back over to the effects module. So I like that um, filter I just added. And I'm going to finish it up now. I'm going to add a vignette. So we'll go right here to vignette. And uh, they have a number of presets. Normally, I either click on the strong or the big softy and then adjust off that. For example, if I click on the big softy, you can see that it's pretty a strong uh, vignette. And the reason why I like to put a dark vignette on an image is because if you have bright areas towards the edges, people will tend to look up there and not down towards the middle, where usually your subject's somewhere in the rule of thirds square, you know, somewhere in there. And if they're looking up here, it won't be as pleasing to them. So big softy uh, usually is a little bit too strong. So then what I would do is I would come into size and I would pull it away or something like that. Or I'll try strong and then pull that one away a little bit like that. Maybe make it a little brighter like that. You could see before, after. There's before, after. It's probably still a little bit too strong. I like it to be very subtle like that. Just kind of push everyone's attention more towards the middle. So outside of this little area over here in the corner that I botched up, that's pretty much the way I would process the image from start to finish. And I hope that helps you develop a workflow for your landscape images using On One Photo Raw 2021 that works for you. Again, in the description below the video, I'll have links uh, to their website, download their fully working free trial, make sure that it's the software for you. If you do decide to purchase it, use my discount code and you could save a few dollars. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.